हरि ही ओम तत्स हरि ही ओम तत्स जय गुरु आई शैल कंटिन्यू द थीम ऑफ यज्ञ दाना एंड तपस आउट ऑफ द थ्री यज्ञ दाना एंड तपस दाना हैज गॉट ए बाइलैटरल एप्लीकेशन वन गिव्स एंड द अदर टेक्स यू गिव एंड द रेसिपिएंट टेक द गिविंग एंड द टेकिंग आर साइमल्टेनियसली टेकिंग प्लेस एंड ईच पर्सन द गिवर और द रिसीवर has his own his own responses and reactions you cannot say the same thing about yajna and tapas in tapas you alone are involved in yajna you are offering something to god represented by an idol or a picture or maybe represented by fire but all these are inert they are insentient so you cannot say they have reactions and responses but in the case of dana it is not so while you feel like giving and you are happy in doing so the recipient is also happy in receiving what you have given if he is not happy then you will be able to recognize it or he will tell you the happiness in both cases is a little different what is the difference you are having a joy of having given or giving the other possesses something you lose something from your stock it is reduced but to his stock it is added so he receives the material gift to be possessed or used by him you are dispossessed of the material but in return or in substitution you get the inner contentment contentment and maybe as long as you are able to remember the act of having given i think it will continue to delight you maybe you gave a substantial measure on such and such an occasion maybe 15 years back think about it you will find that is nourishing to you and you cherish doing so shri krishna speaks about dana in a very effective and forceful manner in the ekadasha skandham of shrimad bhagavatam the ekadasha skandha is called the mukti skandha the last message of krishna is the content of this mukti skandha for the main parts listen to this shloka गाम दुग्ध दोहा असती भार्यां पराधीन असत् प्रजा चीर्थी अंग राजन हीना मया रक्षति दुख दुखी वाट डज इट मीन कृष्णा पॉइंट आउट ए फ्यू ऐटम्स ए फ्यू एक्ट और ए फ्यू इंस्टेंसेस ही सेज ऑल दीज आर प्रोडक्टिव ऑफ recurring misery recurring unhappiness what are they gam dugdha doham suppose you keep a cow which has stopped milking you may feed the cow she will become fatter look very healthy but except cow dung and urine you cannot get a drop of milk from the udder generally cows are kept only for their yielding milk we need it you can say the growth and existence of humanity to a large extent depends upon the milk the cows are giving suppose you keep a cow which does not yield at all milk it has stopped milking milking then what happens there is no purpose served one gam dugdha doham asadim ch bhariyam suppose you keep a wife or you have a wife who is unfaithful to the wedded relationship unfaithful to you however much may you may look after her her mind will be reverted to some other person an extra marital relationship that is never going to disappear from her heart suppose you look after her and try to please her in any manner what will be the effect think about it deham paradhinam our body is paradhina you call it my body but my body is primarily or solely depending upon substances which are not under our control what are these substances primarily air oxygen the availability of oxygen is not under my control the presence is not at all something which i create or i regulate then what about water that is also not produced by me if you extend it further even the vegetables and the other food resources that we have they are also grown by the earth 
then the heat light like what the sun and the moon give electricity or other agents give all these are factors which don't depend upon you and you don't govern absolutely so the body is virtually under the control of other factors such a body if you nourish it and preserve it what is the benefit any time it may defy you any time it may fall asat prajam cha suppose you have children you look after them you had them you look after them with a lot of fondness and expectation when they grow even otherwise you find traits of disobedience now to look after a child who will not be obedient to you it is always a problem the mind is in a constant state of conflict when you look at your children you should be happy and you should be encouraged and inspired but the opposite is what takes place when the boy is disobedient and insensitive so this is another instance finally he says deham paradhina masat prajam cha vittam tu adirthi gridam similarly whatever money wealth or possession you have if it is not purified adirthi gridam okay it is good and resourceful to be having some possessions and wealth but that wealth will not be of any use unless it is purified is a very very significant statement krishna makes unless it is purified purified what will purify your wealth only dana giving heartily and liberally to the others requesting them to use what you give so unless the wealth is purified it becomes putrefied it's impure wealth so it is just like the other things mentioned vittam tu adirthi kritam anga rajan hinam maya anga vajam hinam maya rakshati dukha dukhi then he puts the last item as words mark what i say words which do not make any reference to the existence of god and your reliance on him your indebtedness to him so you may speak very vociferously and you may be a big lecturer or a conversationalist but if your words do not contain a strong devotion to the supreme lord who sustains this universe and who is the lord of all the sequences and procedures and systems in nature unless you have ample reference to him in the form of devotion in the form of reliance in the form of fondness etc i think the words are absolutely useless and futile now all these things go together so to have unpurified wealth and to purify the wealth as i said liberal giving is necessary it is something like all the other things quoted what are the other things a cow that has yield milking an unfaithful wife then body which is depending upon other factors for its survival and existence and then disobedient child wealth not purified by dana and words which do not make a reference to god all these are rakshati dukha dukhi whoever preserves these things or is given to this understand that he is breeding misery after misery misery after misery unhappiness misfortune after misfortune so dana is a very very important element in our life three i said i would like you to remember all the three yajna dana and tapas and in dana everything is obvious obvious you have to give the receiver has to take and in giving you have to be happy and contented equally so the receiver also should be made to feel happy and contented then the dana is fulfilled when the receiver is happy i think that is the right blessing that you get in addition whatever wealth you have is also purified so that when you bequeath it to your successors they will have the additional force of morality and ethics liberality and compassion which will be the greatest safeguard for preserving the wealth for themselves as well as to bequeath it to the next generation it is very difficult to preserve wealth unless you have the strength of charity the blessing of dana so dana dharma is something very very important hari hi om tat sat jai